4K monitor. Ah. Today we're going to look at the Dell UltraSharp UP2414Q, and this is a uh, an Ultra HD 4K monitor. Ultra HD is not the same as true 4K because the pixel count is 3840 by 2160. However, so, it is a, a 4X doubling of 1080p. So it's a very desirable re uh, resolution. It, it'll be a resolution revolution once this hits the market in mass. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so let's talk about what this monitor is now. We just looked at the 27-inch um, Dell. It's a TN panel. You guys can check out that video. I hated that monitor because I received the A00 revision, and the, the mouse lag was awful. So We I don't even know. One. Like Rumor has it that's fixed in the A01 revision, but can it really be if it's 30 hertz? It was bad. And this monitor at 30 hertz had the exact same response. We plugged it in, and the mouse lag was horrendous. Little did we know that you have to go into the um, the on-screen display and change it from Display Point One to Display Point One Point Two. Display so port. you're gonna have Display Port. What did I say? Display. You said Display Point. <laughs> oh, the point. Did I? <laughs> I I could hear the neckbeards typing on the keyboard already. <laughs> we have silenced them. So yeah, you have to switch it from Display Port One to Display Point One Point. Display Port <laughs> One Point Two. It's Display Port One Point Two. One Point Two. Oh. Display Point One Port. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Honestly. So anyway, you want to go through um, the the specs on this, and then we'll talk about the actual monitor itself. And before we actually get into the the guts of this, this is a totally different monitor. It's more expensive than the twenty seven inch that I looked at. Uh, so don't think that this is just a, a you know a younger cousin or a smaller sized cousin of the twenty seven inch. TN panel that's like 650 bucks that I did in the other video. It's a different display and we've had a different, different experience and really it is a tale of two monitors. So Wendell, take it away. Okay, so this monitor is, I guess, street price right now. I don't, we don't really talk about prices, but I feel like we should. Dell always plays games with the prices. And so right now, if you shop around, you can get it for like 750 while street is what, I guess, $1,100? $1, $1, yeah, about 1100 like bucks. yeah. So... You know, shop around, do a deal. If you're going to do a big order to Dell, they want to negotiate with you. But the, the weird thing is this is a 24-inch monitor, so the pixels are going to be really, really tiny. Um, it's 3840 by 2160. It's got a built-in USB 3 hub. It's got a built-in 6-in-1 card reader, so there's an SD card slot on the side. It's got an HDMI input, a mini display port, and a display port input. It comes with a mini DP to DP cable, which is pretty cool of them. Um, and there's one USB 3 port that's accessible on the back. So you've got three ports underneath and the input underneath. And it comes with like this little cable shield plastic thing so you can hide all the wires pretty well, which is nice if you're into the aesthetics of that. Or if you've got, you know, fancy monitor thing like this, you can hide the cables. Um, but there was one port uh, that was accessible just on the back. So it was just like, like right here. And you could just plug something in on the back without having to get into any of that, which I thought was nice. And it was also uh, charger rated. So you could do the two amp fast charging yeah, it's like quick Whatever. charge. At least it was labeled as such. We didn't actually test that feature, but but that part of it was really nice. But other than that, it's it's basically you know a 4K monitor in a relatively small form factor. We get it hooked up. We changed the mode 60 hertz at 3840 by 2160. It was pretty nice. I, I would agree with that. I think it looked a lot better than the 27 inch. Like the 27 inch looked a lot more washed out. This one seems a little overly bright in some areas, and and the contrast is not quite there. Um, and speaking of contrast ratio, they advertise a thousand to one, and I think it's like a two million to one dynamic contrast ratio. But I always ignore that because it doesn't mean anything to me. It's a thousand to one contrast ratio, and uh, the response time on this is eight milliseconds. That's a bit high for me, Wendell, for a gaming monitor. Uh, that's like right on the right on the edge. I mean, seven milliseconds is what I'm using now, and I actually don't experience. Uh, you know, much ghosting or anything like that, but eight milliseconds starts to maybe worry me. And, it, I, I, you know, I didn't, we, we did play some games on it, and I didn't really see much ghosting, but that's the point where the neckbeards really start to get angry if you're using one of those for gaming. You shouldn't do that. So, I, I don't know. Did you notice anything like that? I've been playing um, Wolfenstein New Order on it at 4K, and uh, I played some Half-Life 2 at 1080p. Well, not exactly 1080p. It's whatever whatever resolution that is. I guess it might be 1080p. And I really can't tell a, an input latency. I would really, if we're going to do a lot of testing on monitors, I really need to build some kind of apparatus. So if anybody has an idea of something that I can build out of Arduinos or 
Uh, let, let me give you a rundown of all the inventory of hardware that we've got. I've, I've got uh, tons <laughs> of, of optical sensors, CMOS sensors. I've got a, uh, a bunch of Arduinos, an oscilloscope, a logic analyzer that's good up to about 10 megahertz. The oscilloscope's good up to about 100 megahertz. So I need to build something to scientifically see what the end-to-end -end latency is from the time I flip a pixel to the time that it's actually done, taking into account like USB or PCI bus latency or whatever it is. But the sniff test on this monitor, it passes. It, it, I was able to play a game, and, and I couldn't tell that my accuracy was sufficiently diminished. I didn't notice it, whereas when it was in 30 hertz mode, it was painful to play a game. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing that really makes this a decent monitor is the fact that you can run it in 60 hertz. Um, I mean, it, like I said, it is more expensive than the 27-inch. And the other thing I love about this monitor is the stand. The stand on this monitor is, I mean, it's just a classic well-built Dell stand, but it does offer pivot, tilt, and swivel. So you can turn this thing up and run it like in portrait mode if you wanted to. And a couple of these in portrait mode are really nice, uh, especially for viewing you know, massive amounts of data like websites and that sort of thing. And since it's the equivalent of four 1080p screens, you could run this in portrait mode and put two websites side by side vertically. That would be ridiculous for like browsing forums or using spreadsheets or Bloomberg or whatever. So uh, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Also, the, um, the stand does feature the classic Dell, uh, um, you know, the quick release. It's sort of a proprietary Dell thing. You just push a button and just lift the monitor right out. Um, and there's a slot in the middle of the stand for cable management. It's um, a pretty nice footprint too. It's a, you know, it's, it, it doesn't have a lot of extra feet or anything. It just fits on your desk. It's a, a rectangle and- um, And it has the standard Visa 100 millimeter mount. Oh, that's important as well. Yeah, I, I love the stand on this. Uh, in fact, th this stand, I wish every monitor on the market came with this stand. It's like my favorite stand. So, and it's also really easy to just slide it up and down. Um, it's just a nice, I, I get, I'm more excited about the stand than the monitor if you can't, <laughs> if you can't tell. So. Now, it, it advertises, you know, full 99% Adobe RGB and 100% sRGB and Dell being the company they are. If you have one of those color calibration things, you're going to have to run it when you get the monitor. But if you have problems calibrating it, I would say that Dell will probably let you return it because this is advertised as an ultra sharp and the ultra sharp line of Dell's is meant for professionals. And so if you're buying a monitor because it does have the 99% Adobe RGB color space and 100% sRGB color space and you're not getting it or you can't get it calibrated with a color thing, that seems like that's fine grounds for a return. Also, you mentioned the Visa stand just a second ago. Uh, I want to point out that this is 10 kilograms, which is 22.05 pounds. So if you have a monitor arm or a stand or something like that, uh, you can go ahead and check. As far as the dimensions go, we'll put all that in the link on the website so you can see all of that. Um, I think we're about ready for closing and recommendations. Um, would you would you recommend this monitor? I think if you can get this monitor on a good deal, I definitely recommend it. Um, it, it is a little like, I, I don't think you can get close enough to the monitor to use it at 4K. You might be able to with a monitor arm. <laughs> I mean, um, the other option is obviously scaling. Yeah, yeah, the other option is scaling. The bad news is Windows is really terrible at scaling. So it might be Windows 9 before we have something that, that works really well. Like Windows Core itself is okay, but when you bump up the font size, it can look really, really crunchy. Uh, it, it just, because it's doing bitmap scaling and it's not very good at bitmap scaling. And I would think that on this display, because it's a doubling of 1080p, the Windows could do it smartly so that when it is scaling a bitmap, it can just double it. And then you're, you're basically doing, you know, a super res 1080p monitor. That's what I thought the point of this resolution is. But it seems like Windows doesn't handle that well. So I'm not going to blame the monitor for that. That said, I'm running it at 4K on normal size fonts. And I've got it on a monitor arm about three inches from my nose. And I really <laughs> like that. <laughs> so as long as you guys are going to be uh, using this at 4K, I kind of feel like if you get a 4K monitor and you don't use it at 4K, it's just kind of a wasted concept because the real estate is why you buy this. If you're getting it, running it 4K, and, and if you're going to be putting this close to your face, then it's a pretty good way to go. Also, this could be decent for productivity. It's not going to give you quite the color uh, depth of like an IPS panel. And also, the viewing angle is not quite there, but this is one of the best IPS panels that I've seen as far as the, uh, you know, the viewing angle goes. They say that it has a 178 degree viewing angle, and when you get over to the side, there is a slight color shift, but it's nowhere near the color shift that I was experiencing on the 27-inch Dell. Uh, that one was pretty bad. This one is not that bad. So there you have it. That's the uh, Dell UP2414Q. And if you guys want to check out the price or anything, you just click on the link on the 
right right beneath uh, the uh, the video here. It'll take you to our website where you can check out the latest price, and uh, we'll we'll see you guys over there. And uh, the last thing I guess you guys should do is check out the other video, even if you even if you really don't want the 27 inch, it might be worth a laugh because I got kind of mad in that video. <laughs> I bought I, mean, I bought the thing with hard earned money and I got mad at the thing when I got it in. I was like this, I, I, I'm angry. So go watch that video, have a little bit of fun. And also realize you may want to read some reviews that the A01 revision may have some of the, uh, the, the mouse latency issue or the mouse lag issue fixed, but that's you're not gonna, what I have. You're gonna contact support and try to, try to return it to see if you can get the A01, right? So we may have a follow-up. I'm just going to get rid of it and probably get an Asus or something or a Samsung. I don't know. I'm like so mad at it right now. No, I'm just getting rid of it. That's fine. So it's, That's it's totally going away. fine. Well, here, here's the challenge to Dell then. Come up with a 27-inch monitor so the pixels can be a little bit larger that is as good a quality as the 23.8-inch 20, monitor that we just reviewed that doesn't cost $3,500. I mean, $1,200 max. I might buy it. I don't know. I'll, maybe I'll wait for the Korean version. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we will see you in the next video.